Great Soul Mindsetters, welcome to your physical sciences show. The two shorties are here. The first one, Looney. <laughs> the other shorty, Tracy. Hello, Looney. How are you, Tracy? My Looney. I'm good, thanks. <laughs> uh, yeah, and the Great Souls are all going, oh, no, it's them again. <laughs> it's been quite no, safe for the last couple of weeks, yeah, you know? Really? Yeah, well. You miss me, hey? Well, I haven't been around either, so. Oh. Yeah. But you're back. We're yeah. back. What are we doing for the mindset today? Today we're doing the photoelectric effect. It's actually really nice, guys. It's a nice, easy section. It's um, part of matter and materials, but it goes into your physics. And pretty much it's how we prove that light is a particle as well as a wave. All right. Yeah. Mindset is I hope you're excited for your lesson. Remember to hit us up on Facebook on facebook.com forward slash learn extra. And then our Twitter handle is at learn extra. And you, you can get all the show notes, the videos, and the schedules on learn.mindset.co.za. And then we have an exciting competition going on called Get Connected, where you stand a chance for an Vodacom Airtime and a Sony Xperia R. If you like the favorite teacher, your favorite teacher, their picture, I don't think you're there, okay? <gasps> no, maybe you, you'll be there. How rude. In, in the following weeks, you will. <gasps> no, we love you. <laughs> we'll, make, we'll make a special one. Then my one. name goes in the box. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so you like your favorite teacher's picture after you've like you've chosen a teacher from Curio. You go to Facebook, you like your favorite teacher's picture, and then you go back to the competition graphic and you share that with all your friends. Once you've done that, all the people who've shared the competition graphic will stand a chance to win Vodacom Airtime. And then all the people who've liked the teacher with the most likes, hope I'm making sense, will stand a chance to win a Sony Xperia R. So now I'm going to prove to you that we are both short. I'm going to go to Tracy, and she's going to do the draw for the first two winners of the show. No, don't try. Don't I shake need your ask head. Question. What does the teacher with the most <coughs> likes get? Oh, love. J love. <laughs> you yeah, shorter than me. I think no, you're the same height. Okay, she will just say yes. All right. <laughs> yes, what do you want me to do? I want to draw. Okay, I get to draw two names. names. Yay, it's exciting. Right. <laughs> no, okay. you're not allowed to look. I'm not looking. Okay. Wouldn't look. Best okay, name. so first name. Alrighty, which is, ah, I can say this, yes. my melody, Maraca, I can't say this, there we go. Yes, you have well won done. yourself, Vodacom Airtime Yay. from the Get Connected competition. My melody, Maracalala. Yay! Yay. <laughs> I can say the first name, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> and then number two, Shorty. You shouldn't laugh, there's a girl in grade 11 in my school whose name I can't pronounce, so I call her unpronounceable name. I can say this t too. Sh she she's she understands. Um, Jimmy Raffaella. Yes, yes. Jimmy Raffaella. Yes, you have won yourself. Where to come at time Yay. as well from the Get Connected competition. Yay! Okay. I'm gonna leave you, you now. Okay, so stand. I can teach now. They don't know you stand on the stand, but I know, and I just told them, bye guys. <laughs> yeah, but I'm sit on a high chair, so it's <laughs> fine. <laughs> anyway, now that we've got that over with, all right. Yes, moving on. So. We are going to do the photoelectric effect. I actually quite like this section because there's only so many things that they can ask you with it. Now, the first thing is we're going to discuss the photoelectric effect, how it works. Then we're going to do some calculations because that's probably the hardest part of this, okay? But first, we have to start with the challenge question, all right? And the challenge question is, a 200-watt UV light is shone, I'm sure I've actually spelt that wrong, on a zinc metal plate and electrons are ejected from the plate. The 200 watt UV light is replaced with a 40 watt bulb of the same UV light. Which of the following correctly describes the electrons being ejected? A, the number of photoelectrons decreases and the kinetic energy decreases, or B, the number of electrons increases and the kinetic energy increases. C, the number of photoelectrons decreases and the kinetic energy stays the same, or D, the number of photoelectrons increases and the kinetic energy decreases, okay? So basically, I'm asking you for the relationship between the number of electrons ejected and their kinetic energy when the same light bulb is changed from a 200 watt to a 40 watt, okay? Now, when you make your, your um, selection, Guys, please also try and explain why you made that selection. So don't just take a guess, because what, what we're trying to show you is this is a very typical multiple choice type question, and often you just play multiple guess on your um, multiple choice, which is fine. If you don't know the answer, guess it. You've got a chance to get it right. But you really do need to be able to explain 
work it out in your head. Okay, so we will come back to that in a little while. So let's discuss photoelectric effect. To understand photoelectric effect, we've got to actually go back to Bohr's model of the atom, which you did in grade 10. And in that model, we said, well, remember that the atom is made up of a nucleus in the middle, and around the nucleus, we have our energy level levels. Those energy levels are made up of orbitals in which there can be two electrons at a time. So in the... 1s orbital, there's two electrons, then in the next orbital, so in the next energy level, there's eight electrons, because you have a 2s and, a th and you've got your 3, 2p energy levels, and some of you are going to stop swearing at us, Tracy, we don't remember this, that's okay, but I know that you do absolutely remember that your, ele your atom has those energy levels, okay? Now, within this, these electrons have the ability to absorb and emit energy. So what happens is sometimes the, en the electrons inside the atom gain energy, so they get excited because now they've gained energy, and they jump to another energy level. That's absorbing energy. When they jump back down to the, to the original energy level, they emit that energy again, and that we actually experience as light. Okay, so we see that as sometimes with shiny metals, that's how we see spectra, that's how we see certain, that's how we can actually, um, whew, I'm going to make sense sometime today, that's how we can see spectra, which hopefully you've done, where we analyze gases and that sort of thing, we look at how the electrons jump from one energy level to another, okay, and then go back down. Now, the fact that the electrons can jump like that is very, very important, because it means that if we give the electrons in a piece of metal, enough energy, we can actually get them to leave the atom, but not actually bond with something else, okay? So we can actually get those electrons to leave. So one of the things that's important about metals is we have those delocalized electrons, so maybe we can actually kick those electrons out, okay? So, light has a wave nature, you know that, it's the first thing, diffraction, Reflection, refraction, all those things show me that light has a wave nature, which you did in grade 11. But light also has a particle nature, and for many, many, many years, this was a debate among scientists, from Newton to Einstein to Max Planck to all sorts of people along the way. There was a debate as to whether light was a particle or a wave, and whoever was in favor with the Royal Society um, in London, which is where a lot of the science ideas came from, they are the ones whose ideas were accepted at the time. And it went between both. Some people said, no, it's definitely a wave, so for a while we thought it was a wave. Then they would come up with something else and say, no, it's definitely a particle, so it's definitely a particle, and off we go. Einstein was the one who actually came together and put all of it together, and then there's this man, Max Planck, who's, you're going to use his constant, and, and you should have seen it already, and they really brought the whole thing together and said, well, actually, light has a dual nature. So light doesn't really know what it is. It sometimes behaves like a particle, and sometimes behaves like a wave. So it's both. It's not exclusively one or the other, because it has both natures, okay? Now, wave nature is easy to prove. Particle nature is what we need to look at today. Now, we prove it by looking at the photoelectric effect. Essentially, what happens in the photoelectric effect? We have light rays. Now, here's a piece of metal. This metal can be zinc, copper, aluminium, cal calcium, if we wanted to, but we wouldn't do that, magnesium. But it's any piece of metal, okay? This piece of metal has the electrons in it, and it's got delocalized electrons. If we shine light on it, Sometimes nothing happens, we just see the light reflected back to us. And no matter how bright that light is, it just reflects it back to us. Nothing gets, we don't see anything happening, okay? And we can prove this using an electroscope. What that means for us is if the ability of light to knock electrons out of its orbitals was due to the fact that it was a wave, then the brighter the wave, the brighter the light, the more electrons would be knocked out. But that's not the case, okay? Because it doesn't matter how bright you make the light, if it's not the right color light or the right frequency light, nothing's going to happen. 
But if you take the right frequency light, say for like with zinc, with the zinc metal, you really should use UV light. So you shine UV light onto the zinc metal. What happens is the light comes along and these light rays come along. No, I'm not, that's not going to help us. She's there. They come along and they hit the electrons, okay? And they have energy. And this is a collision, just like in momentum. So, th so the light comes along, hits the electron, energy is transferred, and the electron can move. If we hit the electrons with just enough energy, the electrons get just enough energy to leave the metal. They don't go anywhere. In fact, actually, they just sit on the top. But if we hit it with more energy than needed to get it to just sit on the top, the electrons come off and they can fly away. We use this with photovoltaic cells, solar panels. Okay, It's exactly what we're doing with solar panels. We are using the light from the sun to knock electrons off and get a current to flow. Okay, Now, the minimum, the minimum, minimum, minimum amount of energy needed. So when we take the light and we look at it, and scientists have realized that it's the frequency of the light that's important, not the amplitude, not the brightness, it's the frequency. Okay, now you've also learned, you did this in grade eight, that the energy of a photon is equals HF. Not grade eight, that would be ridiculous, none of you would have taken science. I mean grade 10. Okay, some of you go, no, we Standard didn't. eight. Standard eight. That's, That's what a, you think. Do you remember? A long time ago. <laughs> Grade 10. Okay, so two years ago, you did E equals HF. So you've done this before. So the energy of the photon sits in the frequency of the light. Higher the frequency, the greater the energy. Now, the minimum amount of energy needed to remove an electron is called the work function. You're going to hear that often. Every metal has its own work function, okay? Every combination of alloys has its own work function, which is actually quite a good thing because if every metal had the same work function and say it was a quite a low work function, then we would have electrons buzzing around us all the time, which would get a little annoying, okay? So every metal has its own work function, which is reliant on a specific frequency. We can work out work function by using WO, which is called work function, and that should be FO, actually. Times by Planck's constant, okay, which will be on your information sheet, 6,63 6 times 10 to the minus 34, and times by the threshold frequency. If we shine light onto my metal that has a frequency less than the threshold frequency, nothing's going to happen. The metal, the electrons get a little bit excited, they move a little bit, and the metal gets hot. So this is where we get conduction, okay, but the electrons won't leave. Shine with just the threshold frequency onto the metal, and the electrons have just enough energy to jump to the top. Shine with greater than the threshold frequency, and actually they'll move off, okay? Remember that C equals F lambda, so I can always replace frequency with C divided by lambda. C is the speed of light if we want to. It all depends on what we're given. Why do you need to remember this equation? Because wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional. If I increase the wavelength, I decrease frequency. If I decrease the wavelength, I increase frequency, which is important later on. Okay? If I, now, I've said to you, if I use a frequency above the threshold frequency, my Electrons, we call them photoelectrons because they come from a photon, they're still just an electron, get ejected, so they get moved out, and now they have kinetic energy, so now they have extra energy, and we can actually work that out. The total energy from the light, that's the photon, okay, that's the original photon, gets split up. The first part is the work function, and that's the amount of energy that's needed to get the electron just to get to the top of the um, metal. Once it's got that enough energy there, what's left over gets transferred to the electron as kinetic energy. That kinetic energy means I can actually work out its speed. I can work out how fast it's going, okay? Or we can work out its kinetic energy, and that then will determine current. So. Frequency, when we look at frequency of light, if we're looking at current, 
frequency of the light determines the energy with which the electrons will leave the metal, okay? The intensity of the light, so how bright it is, determines how many. Because if I increase the brightness of the light, that means I have a lot more photons coming down, but they're at the same frequency. So every electron they hit will have the same speed as they go off, okay? But there'll be more of them because the intensity is greater. If I have a, if I have a low intensity but a high frequency, I'll have a small number of electrons but coming off but at a very fast rate, okay? So frequency deals with the energy of our photoelectrons, okay? The intensity, the amplitude of the wave, how bright it is, tells me how many electrons, well, is related to how many electrons will come off, okay? So I think, Looney, we're going to take a short break, and then we're going to jump into some questions. My set is before we take a break, congratulations to Lindo Kutle Mashaba. You have won yourself a Casio calculator from last week's grade 12 Test Yourself competition. My set is all the Test Yourself details are on our Facebook page. So if you want to be like Lindo Kutle, go to our Facebook page and enter the competition and you'll stand a chance to win this awesome Casio calculator. With that said, let's take a very quick break and we'll see you straight after this. Welcome back, Mindsetters. From that break, we're going to do part two of our Get Connected draw. Shorty, are you <laughs> ready? It's a pot calling the kettle I'm black I'm right coming, now. I'm, I'm just coming. saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because so, uh, I'll, I'll <laughs> tall one over here. Don't fall in I told hole. you, we are in this together. Uh -huh, I'm still taller than oh, you. Oh, I can feel your hole now. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm still taller than you. No. You know why you're taller. What? No, what? No, but you know why you're taller. I'm it's not. Because her shoe, it has like a little... Rubbish! Just platform. Just do the I, I, I do not have platforms on. <laughs> you do. You have like a young... Okay, yeah. <laughs> anyway, okay, so... Oh, Ooh. not a chance. Sorry. On mm. Onalena Motla Ping. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just sorry. Onalena so Motla Ping. Onalena Motla Ping. It's beautiful. But I'm going by yeah, it's very nice. It's very different. Right I've never my, heard that name. Right now, my kids are laughing at me. Draw number yeah. two? Draw number two. Yeah, no, I just can't. That's actually very embarrassing. Okay, so oh, hang on. Wait, no, I can do this one. Yes. Tembi Ngubini. Yes. High five. Almost. Well done. It's just the gene. Yes. You know, and our director's been quite rude right now. <laughs> Tembe Ngubeni. Yes. You have won yourself. <laughs> what a come a time from the Get Connected You know what? I really need to High five. No, well learn an African language. No, one day you will. Thank you. Vendor. No, I just got told no. I should start with Vendor. I, I don't know. Nah, I know. <laughs> Nothing with clicks and things. In. You don't understand. You don't understand. But I, I really should learn an African language. I One speak English day. and Afrikaans. Yeah, we all come together. Yeah, you didn't see my <laughs> language marks at school. <laughs> There's a reason language. why. Language? No, what languages did you do? English and Afrikaans? There you go. What but do you mean, I didn't see your language No, marks. what I'm saying is it's you didn't like you see did my the marks. Knack. There's oh. a reason why I teach science, eh? Just putting it <laughs> out there. Okay, so let's do science. The thing yes. I actually can do. Yes. So question one is they give you the work function of three metals, and it's shown in the table below. So we have aluminium, which is 6,54 times 10 to the minus 19, zinc, 6,89 times 10 to the minus 19, silver, 7,56 times 10 to the minus 19. All in joules. What you need to realize here, grade 12s, is that the work functions are all very small. Okay, these values are all very tiny. It's Electrons are tiny little things that doesn't require a lot of energy to get them moving as such. Now they ask you, give a reason why different metals have different work functions. Well, different metals have different electronic structures. So they have different ionization energies, which means that, there's a, that a different amount of energy is required to release the electrons. Okay. So because these structures are different, they have a different number of electrons, they have different numbers of orbitals and that's energy levels, they, do, they require different amounts of energy, okay? That was easy. Now it says, light of wavelength, two 
comma 3 times 10 to the minus 7, so that's my first piece of information. So that's wavelength. Let's just write it down. Is shone onto metal X. We don't know what metal X. The average speed, oh, this is going to be a mean one, of the emitted electrons is 4,78 times 10 to the 5. So V is 4,78 times 10 to the 5. And now they say to you, identify metal X by performing a relevant calculation. So what they are implying is that metal X is one of these three metals. So the question is actually saying to you, find the work function. Find W, O. So we look back here and we go, well, that wavelength is not going to give me my threshold frequency simply because the electrons came off with a velocity. So if the electrons come off with a velocity, it means that the light I used is above threshold frequency. That's the first thing. That automatically tells me that I'm going to need to use this equation, where we said E equals WO plus EK. Okay, so now we go and we say, okay, well, W is what I'm looking for. So E would be HF. I'm not going to change W to HFO because I want WO as it stands, okay? So I'm going to leave it as WO. I do have to do something with the EK, though, because I only have velocity here. So this becomes a half MB squared. So now we think about this, and this is exactly how you go through this in your head, grade 12s, is you say, okay, H is fine, that's Planck's constant. F, hang on, wait, I wasn't given F, but I do know that C equals F lambda, so F is actually C over lambda, so over here, I can now change this, to HC over lambda, okay? I want WO, so that's what I want, so I'm going to leave that there. Ooh, now we go here and we say, I know V, and I bet you anything you're now going, hang on, wait, Tracy, what mass do we use? Guys, this is not something you're expected to know. In fact, I can't even tell you what the mass of an electron is without looking it up. On your information sheet, it will say, on your data, Okay, your constants, it will give you the mass of an electron. So that means I actually know that value too. I have more than enough information. Now, that's the equation I'm going to use. So when you write this down, let's not actually write that there because that was for us. But this is the equation I'm going to use to work it out. So let's put in everything we know, okay? So H is 6,63 times 10 to the minus 34. C, speed of light. Hopefully you all know this. 3 times 10 to the 8. I almost said 6. That would have been sad. Lambda, if we go back to the question, they said it was 2,3 times 10 to the minus 7. I want W-O. <coughs> okay, so this becomes a half. The mass of an electron, you will actually go and look that up because I don't know it off by heart. But when we look it up, we get that it's 9,11 times 10 to the minus 31. It is the most ridiculously tiny little thing, but that's okay. And the speed, which was given to you in the question, is 4,78 times 10 to the 5 squared. And you know what, grade 12s? You've done the signs. What's left after this is a maths issue. Now it's about how you use your calculator. And in this one, you know what? Do it in parts. You can't do this all at once. It's going to get very messy. So let's do this on this side. So I, and I'll move it back in a second. So let's do the first one. So we're going to go 6.633 to the minus 34 times 3 to the 8 
all of that's going to be divided by 2.3 to the minus 7. And we get 8,64. We're going to round it off straight away. So 8,65 times 10 to the minus 19, okay? 8,65. Back, let me just do this a little bit lower down. Um, so 8, 65 times 10 to the minus 19. All right. Now let's do the other side. So I'm going to put it on this side so you can see where I'm getting my values from. Okay. Hang on. Let's just do this quickly so you can see. Okay. So now I'm going to do the half. All right. So we're going to go 0.5. That's a half times 9.11 exponent minus 31. All right times okay now the next one has to be squared please don't forget out the squared so easy to do that so i'm going to put it in brackets 4.78 to the 5 and that all needs to be squared oh someone's um doing all sorts of good and wonderful <laughs> things in the studio but it's all right we'll ignore, it's it. Fine. We'll ignore it that gives me 1.04 and if you look at it, it's 1,0407, so rounding off 1,04 times 10 to the minus 19. Now, I know I'm sort of in the right area because this was 8,65. That was times 10 to the minus 19, 1,04 times 10 to the minus 19. So to get W, O, I'm going to end up going 8,65 times 10 to the minus 19 minus 1 comma 04 times 10 to the minus 19. Okay, we'll pretend that the 19 came out over there. So let's put that in. So we're going to go 8.65 to the minus 19 minus 1.04 to the minus 19. And we get 7.61 times 10 to the minus 19, okay? So we've got 7 comma 6, 1 times 10 to the minus 19, and that's in joules. But are we done yet? Hopefully somebody is screaming, no, Tracy. Yes, I don't know where that came from. And the answer is, no, we're not, because the question was to identify metal X. So we've got 7 comma 6, 1 times 10 to the minus 19, so we go here and we go oh, 7 comma 6 1. The closest one to that is silver. It's not exactly that. The reason why you don't get quite exact that number is, oof, that was terrible. Why you don't quite get that number is because of rounding. All right, because of the rounding off, there's issues. So that's as close as we're going to get. That's 7, 5, 6 times 10 to the minus 19. Okay, now I actually left out a question on this because the next question in this, in this ex from this exam was, what does this experiment show about the nature of light or what property of light does it show? And the answer to this one always is it shows that light has a particle nature. Okay, you can't say it shows that light is a particle because we can't say that definitively. What we can say is that light behaves like a particle. Light behaves like a wave. So it has a wave nature and it has a particle nature. Okay, you ready for something a little more difficult? I hope so. Let's jump into number two. So a group of learners perform an investigation to compare the effect of two types of radiation, so we've got two types of radiation, on the emission of photoelectrons from zinc. Photoelectrons means electrons they just are now using, coming from photons. They place a zinc plate on top of a negatively charged electroscope. The reason why they do that is because when the electrons get emitted, so electrons come off here, this part of the electroscope becomes less negatively charged and the leaf will drop, okay? So you can actually see that the electrons have come off. Ultraviolet and red light, so we have ultraviolet light and we have red light, are shown alternatively, alternately onto the zinc plate as shown below, and the electroscope, with the electroscope fully charged in each 
case. Okay, so we find so far, they record the following observations. With the ultraviolet light, the gold leaf collapses. With the red light, there's no effect on the gold leaf. Now, before you do anything else, what you need to recognize is that means that the ultraviolet light has sufficient energy to emit electrons, okay? That means that ultraviolet light has a higher frequency than red light, okay? Has a higher frequency. Very, 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 very important for you to get there. Red has a longer wavelength. Red is a longer wave, so it has a lower, wave lower frequency, okay? Ultraviolet is a shorter wave with a higher frequency. So, first question. Write down an investigative question for this investigation. Now, guys, I specifically chose this question because you're going to get asked to write some sort of investigative question, conclusion, aim, hypothesis, or something. And what they want is, first of all, you can't ask a question. It's going to be a question. It has to start with something. You can start with a question. Why, when, how, what, does, etc. But you cannot ask a question that can be answered with yes or no. So, for example, you can't say... Does the color of the light affect how many photoelectrons are emitted? The answer there is either yes or no. You can't do that. You can start with which type of radiation, and that's a better word than color of light, which type of radiation will emit electrons or photoelectrons from a zinc metal plate? Okay? Why? Because you're starting to get an an a question where you have to get an actual answer, okay? Or, probably a better one would be, what is the relationship, they love that word, what is the relationship between the type of radiation and the number of photoelectrons emitted from a zinc metal? Because then you'd say, well, the type of radiation, with, and your conclusion to, to a question like that is something like the radiation with the high frequency emits light, emits photoelectrons from the zinc metal, whereas radiation with a lower frequency does not. Okay? So you want to include the relationship between your variables. Your variable is the type of radiation and the number of photoelectrons. The control needs to be there in there as well, and that's the zinc metal. It doesn't help you to go zinc, magnesium, silver, gold, all in the same experiment. Okay, that's a whole different experiment altogether. Okay, now, explain the observation made for the ultraviolet light. Well, that's what I said to you just now. The gold leaf collapses because electrons have been ejected from the zinc plate. That makes the zinc plate positive and the electrons from the gold leaf travel up to the top of the gold to the zinc plate to neutralize it. Thus the leaves become less negative and they will collapse. Okay, because they've lost electrons. So the electrons travel up the from the gold leaf to the zinc place to because they're attracted to the positive now because electrons have come off. Hopefully that's starting to make a little bit of sense. All right, then, what, can, what conclusion can be drawn from this ex investigation? Now you've got to be specific. So our investigative question was what type of radiation can emit photoelectrons from zinc or what is the relationship between the type of, of um, radiation? But You've got to be specific with the information you're given. Now, we saw that nothing happened with the red light, but the gold leaves deflected with the ultraviolet light, which means the ultraviolet light has sufficient energy to emit photoelectrons from the zinc. That is our conclusion. Ultraviolet light it has a frequency has a sufficient, or no, that's a bad way to put it, ultraviolet light has sufficient energy to emit photoelectrons from a piece of zinc metal. That's my conclusion. Done. 
you don't want to do a negative conclusion. So you don't want to do a conclusion where you say, red light cannot emit. You don't, negative conclusions don't really help us. Generally, when we're doing science experiments, we want to find a positive conclusion. Obviously, we get negative ones, but we want to find a positive conclusion. So we want to come to a conclusion that we can use. All right. So I think, Looney, mm -hmm. looking at the time, that I'm actually not going to have enough time to do the next question. So I think let's take a small break, and then when I come back, I'll do the next question, and we'll see who's got the challenge, challenge question. question. Okay. Mindset is let's take a very quick break, and we'll see you right after this. back to the show guys we're gonna do our last round of draws for the get connected competition for today hope you're excited you're crossing your fingers because you might yeah. be the winner right you need to be worried about me <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying i'll but show you just now what she did no, to the board don't judge me right i'm not judging okay okay so, so so can i can i do it can i draw you've got a million names in here so you I, know, I know i'll ruffle and around and I'll, I'll, I'll two. only two hey yes, is that all just oh. two how much air time are they winning do you know 55 rand or 60 rand 60 rand Bonus! 60 Rand Vodacom airtime. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, can I choose one now? Yeah. Are you sure? Okay. Hang on, wait, wait. Oh, let me run the round. I'm looking at you. Okay, okay. Got it? Yes. All right, so this is Munyai Rafiwa. Rafiwa. Yeah. Sorry, it's, it's an F and an H together. Rafiwa. I think, yes, that's how you I'm sorry, it. guys. This is very em embarrassing. No, Munyai Rafiwa. You're trying. I'm yes. trying. It's just very embarrassing. No, it's not. Nice. I'm just saying. You run yourself very come. It's um, amazing. Apparently, this is Vendor. I see my first Vendor words. Is it? That, that's what. It looks Vendor. <laughs> How would I know? No, you well done. You, you're doing your best now. I am Draw getting. The... Can I do another one? Okay, let's do. All right, let's do another one. Okay. Okay. No, no. Hang on. There we go. <laughs> Got it. All right. So, Nkavelo Mabunda. There you go. Yes. Hey, I got that one. Thanks, guys. So, Mkabelo Mabunda. Yes. Yay. You find yourself for the cup in time, my sister. Well cool. Done. Okay. High five. High five. Got it. All right. So, now that we officially know <laughs> that Looney loves tracing, <laughs> I'm not going to have to take it off. Sorry, Looney. I apologize. Um, there was just no stopping her. I had to. I know. That's all you you feel like doing when you have that pen. And you see yeah, that you board. were one of those that were going to, to teachers' classrooms and write all over yes. the board. Yeah, hey, yeah, I've got that. All right. <laughs> anyway, so first thing is they say to you, so it's the same question, and they say learners have access to the following information. The work function of the zinc is 6,88 times 10 to the minus 19. The frequency of the ultraviolet light is 7,819 to the 14. Red light, 4,39 times 10 to the 14. First thing they say is determine the work function, uh, define the term work function of a metal. Well, the work function of the metal is the minimum energy required to eject or emit a photoelectron from a metal. Okay? Work function, minimum energy required to eject a photoelectron from a metal. Guys, I'm not writing it on the board simply because these are the sort of things you need to be learning. You need to have a list of your definitions by this stage, okay, which you can just learn like a parrot, be able to r rattle off in your sleep. So if I had to come to your house at 3 o'clock in the morning and wake you up with an ice-cold bucket of water and, tell, and ask you to define work function, you'll rattle it off like this and get a big smile from me and then I run away because you'll want to kill me. Anyway, so... Use a calculation to explain why red light fails to emit photoelectrons from the surface of the zinc plate. What they are wanting you to do, because now it goes, okay, well, <laughs> where do they even start? They want a calculation, but they observe that it doesn't emit it. So what we do is we go here and we say, well, we know what the work function is. Oh, that's the eraser there, so it can help me. That's the work function. If red light has an energy smaller than the work function, then it cannot emit a photoelectron, okay? It's as simple as that. So all they're actually wanting to do is to do this calculation, is we're going to go E equals HF. 
Now, h, of course, is Planck's constant, which I don't know off by heart, so I'm just going to quickly look it up. So that's 6, 6,3 times 10 to the minus 34. The frequency of red light, 4,39 times 10 to the 14. And you know what? All I have to do now is plug this into the calculator. So we get out our calculators. Let's just put it over here so we can see all the numbers. Okay, and we're going to go 6.63 to the minus 34 times 4.39 to the 14. And I get 2.91 times 10 to the minus 19. So... Now we go back up here and go, well, 2,91, it needed to be 6,88. It is nowhere near close enough to emit. That's a huge difference, okay? What red light will do to the zinc metal, though, is heat the zinc metal up, okay? So it'll make the zinc metal hotter. That's all it's going to do, okay? So, Looney. Yes. Do we have answers to the challenge question? For the challenge question. Yeah. Yes, we do. Okay. You want some answers? Yes, hit me. Okay. Well, not literally, but you know. Rendani <laughs> Nemakovani is saying that answer is C. Because oh. changing the intensity or brightness of light only affects the number of electrons ejected from the metal. It's... It, it doesn't affect the kinetic energy of the electrons if the frequency of light remains the same. This can be explained by the formula. HF is wow. equal to WO plus KE max. So when F remains constant, the KE max also remains the same. Since H, if a constant and, and N, WO of a metal doesn't change. Wow. Wow. That is an A plus answer. I, I seriously, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm more than impressed. Jeez. My kids couldn't have answered it like that. So I'm just, wow, you are 100% correct. Who was it? Rendani. Rendani? Yes. Boy, girl, what do you think? Boy. My boy, I hope you're getting an A at the end of this year because that was phenomenal. I'm actually speechless. Doesn't happen often. But really, I'm speechless. Well done. That is an absolutely brilliant explanation. I couldn't actually do better. Now, for those of you that got a little lost, <laughs> okay, which is okay. The answer is C, and I did it deliberately because what you need to be taking note of is, number one, I went from 200 watts to 40 watts. So I decreased the intensity so it's not as bright, but I kept the same frequency of light. I said to you when we started that the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons is determined by the frequency of the light. And what Rendani said in his beautiful explanation is that the, frequent, the kinetic energy, if we look at E equals WO plus EK, all right, if I'm keeping the frequency of the light the same, work function remains constant, that means this remains constant too, okay? So that means even if you didn't get the first part, this is the only option that is right for the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons. The, first, the second part, though, it went from 200 watts to 40 watts. That means it is a much less... Uh, that sentence is just not going to come out right. The light is far dimmer. There we go. It's much dimmer, okay? So it's not as bright. If it's not as bright, it's not as intense. That also means that there's not as many photons. There's not as many photons hitting the zinc. Less electrons are going to come off because less are being collided with. So that means that we would get decreased amounts of photoelectrons being ejected. So now we look at the row that has two dots on. So the answer is C, okay? And that, oh, wow, that was just, I'm completely blown away. Genius. Have we had lots of questions come through? Um, a couple. 
Okay, because I'm just thinking with time, I don't know if... Should we do those questions quickly? There's and then we'll see. Three. Okay, let's see if we can do those and we might have time for the last... Okay, this is from the Ambani. Yes. Yo, these names though. What will happen to the zinc leaf if we increase frequency of red light? You can't increase the frequency of the red light. Red, to define it as red light, it has a specific frequency. So you can't increase the frequency. You can increase the intensity, but still nothing will happen to it because no electrons come off. If you change the frequency of the light, you're changing its color, and the closer you get to the ultraviolet, the more likely it is that electrons will come off. Okay, so be careful with saying the frequency of the red light because we define color by the frequency of the light. So if I say it's red, it's one specific frequency. Okay. All right. Kay. And then Numvunda is asking, please explain the effect of UV light when shining on zinc on an electroscope. Okay, that's what we were doing in in that f in um, this question. Okay, uh, no, not there. Okay, no, not that one either. There we go. All right, with the electroscope, and this is actually quite important. So what happens here is the radiation comes down. So this is the UV light. It comes down, and electrons. So we'll make them little green dots that were sitting on the zinc metal get ejected because now we've got f light that is above threshold, okay, or at least on threshold. So the electrons leave the zinc plate, okay? As a result, this top part now looks, the zinc plate is now positive because electrons have now left. The electrons in the gold leaf over here go, ooh, positive. Boy sees girl, yay! And they go all the way to the top because they're very excited. Looney's laughing at me, but they attracted to the positives, yay! But as a result, and this is going to get even more worse for the colors. Now what happens is these electrons have disappeared, so the gold leaf is less negative. This gold leaf starts to look almost like it's getting neutralized, and because of that the leaf drops, okay, because we've actually got electrons to come off the top and the electrons from the bottom go up to the positive plate, okay. All right, and then the last one, Rafura is asking you to repeat 1.1. 1.1, I did actually go very quickly, so let's go here. All right, give a reason why different metals have different work functions. What was her name? Rafilwe. I can say that one, Rafilwe. Yes. Okay, sweetie? Different work functions come from the fact that different metals have different electron structures. So the electrons sit in different energy levels, which means they have different ionization energies. Because the ionization energies are different, and remember ionization energy is defined as the energy required to remove a single electron from an atom in the gaseous state. Don't worry about the gaseous state part. But it's about the energy needed to remove an electron. So the different structures mean that I need different amounts of energy. Some metals hold onto the electrons really tightly in comparison to other metals, which means they'll have a high work function. Others have a low work function because they don't hold onto them so tightly. So it's easy to remove them. Okay. So basically, your different work functions is because metals electronically their atoms have different structures, which then means they have different ionization energies. Okay? Are we good? All right. Now, I don't think I'm going to be able to finish all of question three, but we're going to start it just so that you've got an idea, because it is there, and it will, we'll get you on the right track. Metal su surface illuminated, just means we shine ultraviolet light on it, has a wavelength of 330 nanometers, don't get freaked out about that, guys. That means that somewhere along the line, I'm going to have to use this equation probably to get frequency or substitute it in. Electrons are emitted, yay. That means we get above um, the work function. Minimum amount of energy required to emit an electron from the surface of this metal is 3 times 10 to the minus 19. They have just given you work function. Okay, that value is your W O. First thing. Name the phenomenon illustrated, the photoelectric effect. Nice and easy. Oh, look, I've just answered question 3.2 already. It says, give one word a term for the underlying sentence in the above 
paragraph. Well, work function, W. Also, done, nice and easy. Calc ooh, calculate the frequency of the ultraviolet light. So they told me it was 330 nanometers. C equals F lambda. C is 3 times 10 to the 8. It was 330 nanometers. Nano means times 10 to the minus 9. And I've actually got this worked out already. So I'm not going to do it on the calculator because we're going to run out of time. So it's 9,09 .09 times 10 to the 14 hertz. And we go, yay. Nice and easy. Calculate. Ooh, calculate the kinetic energy of the photoelectron emitted from the surface of the metal when the ultraviolet light shines on it. Ooh, that's not so bad because we know E equals WO plus EK. E is HF, so let's actually just put it in there as HF straight away. And you know what? I know H, 6,63 times 10 to the minus 34. I know F, 909 times 10 to the 14. I know WO, they gave it to me here, 3,5 times 10 to the minus 19. Oh, look at that. You, wish, you probably are thinking, why didn't you start with that question, Tracy? Yeah, because it's more fun to start with the hard ones. Okay, so 6,63 times 10 to the minus 34. Just pretend you can read that. 9,09 .09 times 10 to the 14. WO was 3,5 times 10 to the minus 19 plus EK. We're going to run out of time, guys, so I'm not actually going to show you where I get the answer on the calculator. I'm pretty sure you guys can work that out, though. But my kinetic energy works out to be 2,53 times 10 to the minus 19 Please be careful because with a question like this, it becomes, especially if you're used to then going EK equals a half MV squared and then you try to work out V. I didn't want V. Don't work it out. Leave it. That's what I want. If you got the frequency wrong in the question above, they'll carry it down. So don't stress. Then they ask you, the intensity of the ultraviolet light illuminated the metal is now increased. The intensity is increased. What happens to the kinetic energy? Nothing. Okay, intensity increases, doesn't do anything to the intensity, but it will increase the number of photoelectrons. It's the same as the challenge question. All right. Wow, I went fast on that one. Guys, photoelectric effect, pretty much going to guarantee it in your exam. Practice, 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 okay? It's been in the curriculum for the last few years. You can go look at past papers, go look at the last few exams. The more you do, the better you get. Okay, so practice, guys. I actually can't remember what we're doing next week, but we'll be back. And, yeah, I'm done. I'm going to go home now. All right. I need to go work, do work for my matrix. You need to go do work for your matrix. Yeah. But we... What about our matrix? I've done their work now. You're done. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tracy. You're welcome. I promise you back next week. I want the most likes. If you are back. I yes, will do it. I want the most likes. Tracy, guys, we love Tracy so much. Remember to get connected, go to that page, like, 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 share, 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 and you'll stand a chance to win. 55 Rand Vodacom airtime and a Sony Xperia L. And as well as this competition, don't forget the Cassio competition. All the Test Yourself links are on our Facebook page. Enter that competition as well. But from us, until next time, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. He loves you.